Hey, welcome back to Way the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, I'm going to be showing you how to install a Sane Smart USB 8 channel relay board. That way you can power up all your external toys from things that are going on in your visual pinball table, such as 12 volt gear motors, shaker motors, beacons, fans, and the list just keeps going on and on. So if you want to learn how to do this, I'm going to relay the information to you. Eh? Eh? Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. So first off, some of you are probably thinking, what the heck is a USB 8-channel relay board? What does that even mean? So I'm going to break it down for you. The USB refers to the cable that is going to connect to this board and then connect to your computer. Now, when you are playing a game in Visual Pinball and you trigger a, a pop bumper or a gear motor or a shaker motor, your game is going to tell your direct output framework or your DOF that that has triggered. And then DOF is going to send a little bit of voltage and a signal down your USB cable to the board. Now, the relay part of that is these little blue parts on here. Think of relays as a part that lets you put a little bit of electricity in to trigger on something that uses way more electricity. And then the fact that it's got eight channels refers to the fact that there's eight of these relays on here and you can power up eight separate devices and maybe even technically more as long as you don't go over what the amperage rating and on these it's 10 amp so you technically could put two or three items on that relay but when it turns on all of them would turn on or off and they can't be more than 10 amps now if you would like to learn a lot more about relays and have a way better understanding of how they work and some cool automotive repair principles i will put a link to the video above on a great video on relays and everything you need to know about them all right so the next really good question that you might have is why are we using this relay board and not just taking maybe the extra ports and pinouts from our kl25z board or maybe using an led whiz board what's the pros and cons well your kl25z board and your led whiz boards are going to be really limited on how much amperage they can actually support apply for an output to trigger on an event or to actually power an event. So things like KL25Z and the LED whiz boards are only really good for powering up LEDs. As for these relay boards, there's a lot of good things and really only one bad thing. The good things are it's cheap. This thing's like $24 down in the States. And by the time it comes up here to Canada with shipping and duty and conversion and taxes, I think that's like 70 or 80. I don't know what you guys are doing to us. Like seriously, what did we ever do to you? Why don't you come on up? We'll have some poutine and you can bring some of these boards up. That'd be great. Uh, other things, this is really good at handling power. Like I said, these can power up 10 amps each, which is quite a bit when we're talking about the toys that we're powering. Uh, the only downside to this is that it is strictly on and off. We don't have any pulse width modulation, so we can't really control how fast something spins or the, the dimness of a light, things like that. It's on off. Think of these as electrical switches in your room, except you can Turn them on and off from distance with a little bit of electricity. That's basically what these are. And I guess the other limiting factor is the fact that we only have eight channels to be able to trigger on. Now, Saint Smart does make four channel, eight channel, and 16 channel boards, and they make USB and non USB versions. But keep in mind that the eight channel USB one is the only one that's going to work with DOF in our setup. So if you do run out and you need more than eight channels, you're going to have to buy another board. A couple things to know about this board, the voltage, so 12 volts positive coming in goes to your VCC and then your black negative common ground wire is going to go to the GND terminal. Now the manufacturer states if you switch those up, there's no protection device on here and it will kill the board and you'll have to get a new one. So watch you don't do that. Now, the other thing you need to know is on each of these relays, there's actually three of these pinouts. So the center connection here is going to be the positive voltage from your 12 volt power supply. And then these connections on the left and right are up to you whether you want to have this thing turned on all the time and you're shutting it off when something happens or if it's going to be off all the time and when you trigger it, it turns on. Now, most of our toys are going to be off all the time. So we're going to want the one on the left, which is normally open. So it's not getting power right now. So that circuit is open, meaning the electricity is not flowing and your toy will not be turning on. However, if you put it on this side, these are connected all the time. And when you trigger the, the relay to turn on, it will actually kill the power, which is not what we want. Now, on this case, it doesn't actually tell you that. So what I'm doing is I'm using a multimeter and I'm setting it to my ohms beep function so that I can see the resistance. And when I connect these, you can hear that beep. So when I put it together on this connection, you can see that that is normally open. 
and this side here beeps because it's got normally closed. So we want these ones here. And so one of the things that sucks about this board is it is so cheap, they don't even send any instructions with it. So we're gonna go to the SaneSmart webpage where we're gonna download a zip file that has a bunch of stuff we need. So it's gonna have the manual so we can actually figure out what we're doing. It's gonna have the drivers so that Windows can run this thing. It's going to have a program so that we can actually scan what the serial number is so that we can put that properly into our DOF setup. And then it also has a relay board manager, kind of like click on a button on our desktop to get this to actually trigger so we can test it. So let's go find that stuff. So first thing we're gonna open up is our search engine. And we are going to type in Sane Smart eight channel relay board. And we're gonna go right to Sane Smart here, not to Amazon or anything like that. All right, here we go. Eight channel, 12 volt USB relay module. That looks like the one. Oh, price went up. Literally like in the last two or three hours. Crazy. Okay, so we're gonna go down to the bottom and we need to click on this to download the manual. Okay, click up here for the manual and it's gonna be in a zip file. So once that's downloaded, go to the download folder and we're gonna right click copy. And we're gonna put it right on the desktop. Okay, now I'm gonna use 7-zip to extract it. And this is it right here. Okay, and let's open this up, see what's in here. All right, USB 8 Relay Manager. So here is the actual documentation of how this works and what you're supposed to do. And if we open this up, it is literally only a page or two, so not a lot of info, but... So very first thing is you should install the USB driver. So there's a CDM20802 setup. So that gets the driver, and then we're gonna connect the board with USB cable to the computer and it's saying it should auto install the driver. And then to get this working, we're gonna to have to put 12 volts power and ground to those connections I showed you on the board. And then we're gonna open up this software here, USB 8 Relay Manager V version 1.4, open that up and then we should have this kind of pop up. And then you'll have these and you basically can just trigger these on and off by clicking the mouse. And then we can check on the board because you'll feel in here clicking and I think there's actually a little LED that lights up for each of these when they do as well. So let's go and put in the USB driver. Okay there's a little setup.exe right here. So click on that. Say yes. Saying it might not have installed correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the USB with the cable and then if it automatically works, great, then I can just click this. If not, then I can come back since I've left this up and I'll put on the compatibility settings. All right, I just plugged in the USB and it did not do anything. So it's either it did not install correctly or maybe it's waiting for this to be closed. So let's just try this program install correctly and see what happens. And just to make sure it wasn't that, I'm gonna re-plug, unplug and plug the, the USB cable. Okay, and I did not get anything pop up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redo this and then try to run it in that compatibility mode. Click yes. Oh, there we go. Installing driver. Perfect, that looked like that worked. Okay, next thing is we need some power and ground. Now I will put it to uh, underneath the monitor and pretty it up and mount it later in the video here. But for right now, just to test this, I'm gonna put uh, 12 volt power and ground to this board. Okay, 12 volts is now to the board. Now let's run that Relay Manager program. This guy right here, double left click. Okay, it looks like you get to pick which board. This is only board one, so let's open it. Yay, board found, that's always good. Okay, and then let's do manual mode. So, Relay 1. Whoa, I heard a zap. Heard a zap, that's gonna be the solenoid, so once you know what, how relays work, uh, when you put a little bit of electricity through a coil of wire, we make a magnetic field. So the little bit of electricity is making a magnetic field, 
which pulls down a contact plate and connects the larger amperage to go through the relay. So that's what the clicking sound you're hearing. So that's relay one. There's relay two. Relay three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay, sounds cool. Now I can't actually see the board, so I want to see if there's a light going on when I do this as well. Yeah, there we go. There's an LED for all of them. Perfect. Okay, and then we got an all on too. Let's do that. Woo! All on, all off. Awesome. This thing is good to go. We just need something to tell this to turn on so that we can turn on our external toys that we hook up to this board. So the next part of this would be having to figure out which toy we want to put on and then go into our DOF and make all the changes for DOF and cabinet files and things like that so that the game can tell DOF to turn on something and then the computer can tell this relay to switch that mechanical toy on. All right, so just to test this board out so that I know it works, I've got a 12 volt power supply that I've set to 12 volt. I've got a random windshield wiper motor from some old Toyota car. Uh, and then I've got my relay board that we just hooked up. So the wiring for your toys is going to be, you need a wire positive from the red from your 12 volt power supply going to the center connection on your relay. Then you're going to need another red positive 12 volt wire going from the normally closed side of the relay going to the positive on the motor. Well, actually it doesn't really matter because they're DC motors, it'll just go the different direction. And then you need a ground wire coming from the other connection that makes the motor spin going back to your ground or to this case your 12 volt power supply. So now if I go click that relay manager board and click that channel on, we should get this gear motor working. Okay, I played around with it off camera. It is relay five. So when I click this on, we should have gear motor action. Yeah, or off, perfect. Sweet, I'm gonna say that works. And the best thing about this thing is there's actually two speeds, right? Your windshield wipers have low speed and high speed. So yeah, I'm gonna use this in my cabinet. Vibrations are, feel awesome. Sounds awesome. All right, one of the last thing about the Sane Smart board is that when you have it plugged into your cabinet and all your toys are connected and power supplies, when you turn on the power to the cabinet, you're going to hear this thing self-test. So it's gonna do a bunch of clicks of the relays. And because you have it hooked up to your mechanical toys, you might have a split second worth of the gear motor or a knocker or a shaker motor, whatever you've got powered that might power on for a split second. So just to let you know about that in case you're wondering why that's happening. Apparently there's not much we can do about it, but realistically it's just a startup. All right, just to show you that, I'm gonna power down my cabinet and I got the camera on my Sane Smart board and the gear motor. So you'll see what happens when this cabinet starts back up. Power button's going on now. No, oh, that's it. So just a big thump from the gear motor and a couple zaps of the relays, not a big deal to me. Oh, another one. I just about stopped recording. See if there's any more here. No, nope, doesn't look like it. So one little quick hit and then kind of a bigger hit. Good to know.
All right, there's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to get your Sane Smart USB 8 channel relay board all set up and working and tested and ready to go for all your mechanical toys. Now, I'm gonna cut the video short right here. That we got a nice short video for you guys. Uh, very next video is probably putting that gear motor in, so we'll do that. And keep in mind, it's not just putting black wire and red wire and putting it in the cabinet. We have to go into DOF, make some changes, go into our cabinet file, make some changes to update for that Sane Smart stuff, as well as go into the back end of VPX so that we can turn off our SSF sound effects only for that gear motor, so we're not double hearing gear noises. Uh, if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram? That'd be much appreciated. That way you can see what's going on in the shop in between videos. And until next time, take it easy.